Original Santana from Chicago, you feel me? Yeah, he did. You know how we coming now, we rocking the Sour Squash shit, man. You understand, man, I'm not a snitch, man. You know me. Hell no, nah, nigga. You know, back then, anybody feel like Chicago all my life, you know. I ain't remember CLG, you know. Well, I ain't gonna be nothing but another game, man. They're going to the fed joint, you know. Especially Southside Chicago, we had no hope, like no, no hope, ain't no hope. We give people hope, like they look at us and see me every day, and they look like that's hope, you know. I look at, I'm like Barack Obama to these guys, man. They, I'm hope to them, like. My dog X and put up on me, real. I drop a one, one and one and two sixteen out. You have. You don't gotta do all that extra drop folds and 20, 20 ounces, drop an eight to two liters. You gonna f yourself like that? You trying to die. Hey yo squad, what's the drill? Back with another video, man. Hip hop has seen the loss of some greats that would have taken over the game. But for some, even when they're gone, their impact is just too huge to die off. One of the most notorious out of Chicago was feared and respected by the homies and the ops, Fredo Santana. He wasn't just a scary sight in his music, but in his ops dreams and in real life. You wanna hear the real Freddy Krueger story? Then you gotta stick around to hear about Fredo Krueger. So without further ado, let's skip the play play and get down to business. Team O Block is a home of a lot of savages. Derek Coleman, also known as Fredo Santana, is among many and one of the most gangsta out of all of them. He was just the Lord Jit coming up when he was already surrounded by hood activities. His pops was known in the streets and Fredo was brought up in the footsteps of his blueprint. Even as a baby, he was in his dad's arms while his father was holding the strap. Fredo Santana went from growing up among his aunties and brothers to growing up into hood savagery. He became a student of the game until he mastered the streets. He became BD and his homies, all of them, was allegedly selling packs, stacking racks, and toting gats. That's the shooter right there, man. The shooter, <laughs> man. Pop in the pop in your dick. You already know, man. Fredo Santana was of many talents and wasn't scared to let the ops know. On any given day, he could catch a body real quick. As a youngin, he would roll like other savages like Lil Reese, King Von, and Chief Keith banging in the streets. That's about it. Fredo was the only one. Fredo used to be in the building. Chief Keith used to be in the building. Even at that young? Know, yeah, even when we was that little, yeah, all of us used to be in the building. Chief Keith was allegedly his blood cousin, and the two were tight like brothers. Like, Chief Keith, like, his grandma and my grandma are sisters, and his grandma is my auntie. So that makes him my cousin. Like, we was real cousin. While Fredo was gang gang, Keith was beginning to focus more on music when they linked up with DJ Ken, who moved from Japan to Chicago. He was behind them, helping to push their career in the studio. Fredo, on the other hand, was too caught up in the streets to follow in the same path, always making excuses to avoid hitting the booth. Like, he was doing, he was making beats and we was hearing him and, you know, he told us he do music and Keith went, was doing music with him first. First, I used to always make up excuses when we used to be like, keep it like, man, we finna go to the studio, I right, no, man, I got some little females coming. Instead, he chose to push Keith and even be his manager at one point. You know, like before I was rapping, like I was like Chief Keith, like manager, you know, so like. Fredo's hood shenanigans would eventually violate his parole and he would find himself again behind bars. By now, he had dropped out of school and was fully in the streets. During that time, Keith linked up with Lil Reese to drop the classic banger, Don't Like. In the song, Reese dropped the iconic line, Fredo in the cut, it's a scary sight. It introduced the world to the Chirac Savage, and soon anyone in the dark will soon be coming to the light. Fredo incarcerated, and watching Chief Keith and them blowing up, got serious about rapping when he got out and no longer made excuses. He slid through the booth, guns and all, everything on him, and recorded one of his earliest tracks, Hitter. Together with Chief Keith and their once close homie SD, they formed GBE, also known as Glory Boys Entertainment, Collective, and set out to take over the industry. So GBE, bruh, who? Like how did that come that about? That came together on some, all right, Fredo had, Fredo had got out. And like me and Keith was already hanging, you know what I'm saying? Day to day doing all the things, we was already doing our thing day to day then. We had started like, you know, the music thing. I did a video with a fallout of GBE with Keith and OG member SD. So you can check that out, check out the full story. 
Fredo and Keith will begin collaborating on tracks like On That, and it was up from there. Fredo Santana dropped his debut mixtape off the Lil Reese line, That's a Scary Sight. He went from making excuses to having one of the craziest work ethics in the game. He not only launched his own label, Savage Squad Records. You know, I'm, I'm just finna start another record label, so I just started Savage Squad Records, you know. And I um, signed it myself, you feel me? Put out um, so many projects, and you know, it just grind, you know. But under his imprint, he dropped the heat left and right with singles like My Lord Ninjas, with Keith and Reese, Ring Bells, Jealous featuring Kendrick Lamar, and projects including his debut album, Trappin' Ain't Dead. His collab project, Street Shit with Gino Marley, Walkin' Legend, Scary Sight 2, and Fredo Krueger. Fredo Santana's music told the struggle of the streets and painted the dark lifestyle fans were drawn to and his ops were afraid of. Yet and still, he was so humble and well-respected by his peers and his ops. I'm a Fredo. I'll be Fredo. Shorty was an op, nigga. That goes to tell you the kind of person he was. No fake made up persona, but just honestly who he was. By now, Fredo was mainstream in the trenches and in the industry. He was rapping and catching ops lacking allegedly, but he wasn't wasting the opportunity he had and was branching off into other avenues of business, taking his status to a higher level. Bro was producing, designing clothes, designing shoes, modeling, executive producing movies, touring. So you, you started off just like, you know, like, rapping and shit but you know you got into other fields you, you know produce a little bit and then obviously now you're running your own independent label and shit most definitely you know, you know i'll be modeling and shit you know you got to get into everything yeah, these days yeah, man most you, definitely. the game is wide open yeah then i'll be designing clothes and shit fredo was about that bag as his buzz reached worldwide he caught the attention of ovo honcho drake who brought him in to star in his music video hold on we're going home Fredo was solidified all around, but no matter how he tried to stay away from beef and focus on building his brand and career, dudes just couldn't help but bring Fredo Kruger off the bench and back into the game. Before Migos reached the stardom that they have today, they were young, buzzing group coming up out of Georgia, and they got into it with Fredo's cousin, Chief Keith. Keith, who sends shots to the Migos on the song Trap, rapping the bars. Bitch, I'm trapping out the mansion. I ain't trapping out no bando. This ain't no Versace. References Migos break out tracks bando and Versace. Migos would hit back with some heat on Chief Keith with their diss, Jealousy. From there, the two kept throwing shots back and forth online. Keith got back in the booth to mock the Migos with a diss called Pull Up. Migos would then pull a slick move doing a show in Cali where Keith was living at. Knowing Keith was in rehab at the time on judges' orders, Migos was out there talking reckless on interviews and getting into a shootout in Miami and Chief Keith Keith's name came up. Here's what they had to say. You know, people are, you know, allegedly shooting at you guys on a Miami highway and people are shooting back and there's like, like real life situations happening here that most artists never have to deal with. What, what we got going on, we trendsetter, we changed the game. We young, we ain't been in the game as long as the other folks ain't dead. Things started getting out of hand with Migos called GBE member Capo lacking in an alleged Chicago restaurant. You ain't know none of that, boy. What? You ain't know none of that, but you know it, boy. All right, what? You said this. You said. You said. You said. Capo and Migos now get into a back and forth online with Migos claiming to swing on Capo and Capo saying all their swings missed and they were ducking taking it outside. It was all cool when the Migos was doing their internet jabs, but the moment they messed with the GBE homie in person, Fredo had to step in and remind dudes it's a scary sight for real if he pop up. Fredo wasn't about to let the Migos be on no time foolery anymore on the gang, and he would catch a body if he had to. What happened next was Fredo being a man of his word. Rumors would circulate that Fredo and them caught Migos lacking at a show, and an altercation popped off, and Quavo chain got snatched off his neck. Keith would later confirm the rumor posting a pic of the chain with the caption, What's this? Once Fredo stepped in, that was that. Common sense prevailed, and the Migos squashed things with Keith, putting an end to all of the beef. Fredo nearly threw away his hard work over the beef, but luckily, things de-escalated once he let the Migos know what was the real deal. Fredo was becoming larger than life. He was killing it in the independent game with his label, even turning down a deal that he considered the French Montana and Diddy's Bad Boy Records. Where are you thinking of going? I'm hearing Diddy is recruiting you. Yeah, I, I mean, I'm, I'm here with my friends, you know, Coke Boys, you know. I mean, I actually hear a little, you know, talk with, um, Bad boy, like months ago, like three, three, four months. Sadly, the high didn't last that long. Ironically, because Fredo was getting too high to cope with the trauma of the streets and the loss of his homies in his life. 
He was dependent on lean. Things got so bad that his grandmoms had to message him, urging him to slow down when she saw a pic of him with the lean belly. Grandmom's messaging was ignored, and Fredo would suffer the consequences of his addiction. He found himself on a hospital bed in March 2017 after suffering from a life-threatening seizure. Fredo would chuck it up to an exhaustion and being overworked. He would survive the scare and fans thought it was smooth sailing, but Fredo found himself again in the hospital in October 2017, and this time was diagnosed with liver and kidney failure. Rappers like the late XXX Tentacion pulled up to the hospital to show love to the Chirac legend. Fredo recounted how his homie Gino Marley found him on the floor shaking and bleeding from his mouth. Finally, Fredo opened up about his lean dependency and was even ready to hit rehab and change his life around for himself and others that were dealing with addiction. Fredo showed how strong he was. He made it out and was back home, and you could see the change in time with his weight and attitude. He was trying and seemed to be doing better with the aid of the seizure prescription Kepra. You better stand away from that lean. Ain't no drink, man. No weed, man. But the damage had unfortunately already been done. In the following months, Fredo would continuously experience seizures until he suffered the fatal one on January 19, 2018. His fiance found an unresponsive Fredo at his LA crib and he would never open his eyes again. Fredo Santana was gone. An autopsy would later rule cardiovascular disease as the main cause in addition to idiopathic epilepsy. The industry and the world was in shock and an outpour of condolences hurt and love was posted online for the late rapper. Before he passed, him and Keith were actually working on a collab album called Blood Thicker Than Water. Cause I'm in him finna drop a joint album together, right. you know. When's that coming up? Um, like we picking a date right now, man. And I'm thinking like the um, end of June, you know. Keith later did an interview open up about Fredo being the one looking out for him, making sure he wasn't popping pills to damage himself, and confirmed the project will be out in time. He always used to, you know, make sure we was doing something right. Yeah. Back when I was doing Zans. Mm-hmm. I used to try to do five of them. Oh, man. He used to tell me, like, no. Yeah. He gave me, he gave me one. He gave me a half. I told him. Damn, he said good. just start with this. But he was right. If only Fredo took his own advice sooner. Fredo Santana came up from nothing making it big to become the hood Barack Obama, inspiring youngins and showing them that they can make it too. Especially Southside Chicago, who had no hope, like no, no hope, ain't no hope. We give people hope, like they look at us and see me every day, and they look like that's hope, you know? I look at, I'm like Barack Obama to these guys, man. They, I'm hope to them, like, he doing that, like, I mean, I, maybe I can do, you know, something like, you know? They just giving people hope. R.I.P. to the real Freddy, Fredo Krueger. <laughs> There you have it. Thanks for kicking it with your boy. Appreciate the love and support, man. I'll catch y'all when I spin back round for the next vid. R.I.P. Fredo. I'm out.